Well, we have a we have a we have a quorum. So I'm gonna, uh -huh. but I'm gonna go, we have a quorum. I'm gonna go call the meeting to order. We'll do the pledge of allegiance and then we'll take roll. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to do a roll call. Can we start with the the people on Zoom? Uh, Sonny can you Culver. Hear us? Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay, thank you. Is Lisa was she on? And this is Lisa. I hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to stay muted because there's lots of activity here. So then, if you have a question, you'll chime in. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Paul Chernetsky. Gabe Romack. Dan Claire. Michael Faith. Will Felice. Martin Chart. Susan Fick. Suzanne Allen. Chuck Hamburg. So when we last left, we had been through the entire packet, and then we had some additions and some uh, ed uh, additions done, and some editing done. There's still some a uh, couple of open sections that we need to talk about, and I would like to get to those as we move into those articles that they pertain to. And then there are the two newer topics that we talked about, the La Loma and the water issue, and I would like to finish up with those. Uh, and Because those will be added as additional articles to our charter. So if, if everybody's okay, the other thing is we, we have a couple of people on Zoom. So as far as if you'd like to speak, let's, we'll, we'll raise your hand and we'll try to keep the cross talking down so you guys can hear us. Um, what I'd like to do today is we'll go through, we'll, just like we did before, we'll start it from number one. It should have all of the editing that we've gone through and, and it's been back to legal. Um, it is... Go ahead, Eric. The only thing that's not in there is uh, Vice Chair Allen has provided some suggestions with regard to the taxation uh, section, but we didn't talk about that at the last meeting because Paige wasn't here. Okay. Yeah, and I know that we did an executive. She's met with Paige, and you have some information to share with us. Will we have it available on the screen? Yes. Okay. So my plan on that, when we got to that section, then we'll, she can go ahead and present that. Yeah, I just wanted the board to know that because we didn't talk about it as board, we didn't want to okay. put it in there it, just yet, so it didn't look like you know council was. You know, no, that was uh, something that stuff. that um, Suzanne and I had talked about in an executive, and then of course everything that we talk about and put together has to go to the legal okay. to the city. So, and then we were going to talk about those today. Um, any uh, yes. Question, do you want the red line version or the... I think they would like to see the red, red line, line version on the screen. Okay. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. And then the Zoom can see, we'll be able to pick that up as well, yeah. going to start with Article 1. Back to the, the time we went through it the okay. second time around, we had on the side, we had made it all the way through Article 1, Section 1, Section 2. There was all, We were pretty much in agreement. We got into Section 3. <coughs> we were down into Section 2. There was a question about adjusting pathways on the cart path. 
that was the only thing on that. And that's been, I see that's been highlighted and changed. We'll just move it along through that three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> we didn't really have anything to discuss on that from four. Anybody have any questions on that in Article One? Suzanne, anybody? I had a okay. question. Okay. Susan, if, if you would please read, I feel like Section One and Seven are very similar. I feel like I was just kind of looking for guidance from the city if those two sections could maybe be combined a little bit. Um, in regard to acquiring property, it's simple. Um, interest to state by purchase, gift, devise, lease, or condem condemnation. But if you go to um, 7, it also talks about receiving gifts, donations, and all kinds of property, and be simple or trust, charitable. Do you think those need to be separated? or? Yeah, it's nice to have them separate because one's dealing with real property and then the other one's dealing with gifts, which could be, <coughs> property, could be personal property, could be vehicles, could be uh, you know, a whole, whole bunch of different things that could be classified. Um, and the, you know, the, the acquisition of the, the real property in one is by purchase, gift, device, lease, or condemnation, whereas the uh, number seven is specifically talking about receiving bequests and donations into the, into the city. So okay. It would be yeah. separate topics, but I would suggest they, they remain separate like they are. We talked about it, too. This is going to be a preliminary agreement. And then we, we realize we can take stuff out when it goes back to them. If they think legally it's going to come back, it's going to come right back. And mm -hmm. we'll, so anyway, are we good on Article 1 so far? Everybody, any other questions? So if we, I think we're going to do a cumulative uh, um, roll call vote at the end after we've gone through everything. But like right now, is everybody pretty much going to vote for Article 1? Good. Okay, so we'll move into Article 2. Um, and Mr. Chair, I had a, yes, I had a question on Article 2, Section 1. Okay. <clears throat> Do we need to say anything in that um, and add the word subject to ordinances? I know we talked about ordinances quite a bit at previous meetings. I would have to ask the attorney on that. But where were you thinking in there? Um, All the powers of the city not in conflict with the Constitution and the applicable law of the state of Arizona? Yes, and subject to the limitations of this charter. And ordinances? Well, ordinances are ordinances would be secondary to the charter in in a tier of, of applicability under the law, you would have the charter, and then you would have the code of ordinances, the city code. So okay. this would uh, this wouldn't be subject to the ordinances because this establishes a, a higher form than the ordinances. Okay, thank you. So this is one of the areas that we left that we talked about a little bit last time, and it's on our sort of board to-do list as we're moving into this next section, and it has to do with some of the term limits and also the minimum age, and those were the two that we kind of weren't together on consensus. Um, those are the, the one that Vice Chair Allen had the suggestion on. Yes, the, oh, we actually, okay, yeah, yeah. So we kind of talked again in executive session and just put, put together a proposal here to the group. It's not anything. It's just one way to kind of look again at this, and I would like to see everybody to review this, and we can talk about it. <clears throat> so, Suzanne, do you want to go through that? I absolutely. Um, so, these are 
changes that I made based on some of the discussions that we had. So this is, a, again, kind of a guideline from what we discussed. And I think that this captures everything, but um, obviously this is, you know, wide open for discussion. Um, some of the things haven't changed, really. I've just kind of reworded it because I, I like to do that. I like it to make a little bit more sense to me. Um, so the qualifications, nothing has really changed here. The age, I know um, we had talked about 18 or leaving it as qualified electors. I left it as qualified electors here because the 18 years old is kind of understood with this. And so um, that's really the only thing that has um, really been specified in Section 4. Now, you, you mentioned, you said something about if the law changed and it went to 16, then we wouldn't. Yeah, that would be the only consideration or only concern would be is, you know, there are discussions in other, other states, other municipalities to try to amend the, the voting age and reduce it down to 16. So it's. I don't foresee that happening in Arizona, but if by chance in 10 or 20 years the legislature does decide to change the voting age down to 16, then, then in order to maintain it at 18 or higher, the, we would have to do a, a charter election to amend that section, which isn't that difficult of an issue to do. It's just, you know, if you want to set it at 18, or 21 or a specific age, um, or if you, if you want to leave it at qualified electors and then have uh, the age 18 there that no person shall be eligible for the office of mayor or city council uh, who shall not have attained the age of 18, and then that covers you if that potential change comes down the road in the future. Sure. How do we feel about that? Does anybody have any thoughts on that, Gay or Andrew? Anybody? Mike? I, suppose that I think the last council person that ran ran unopposed, so could have a 18 year old slip in there. If is, I guess the question is whether the, the board is is if, whether we want to establish a higher number or not, higher age. Or not. Matt, can you remind us what's the process for running for city council? I think it's similar to a freeholder, so there's a period of time where you have to collect a certain amount of signatures mm -hmm. to get on the ballot. If you miss that window, basically you become a writing candidate. Candidate. So to Mike's point, if an 18-year-old is you know out there collecting signatures and then ends up on the ballot unopposed, you know, he's just going to walk into it unless there's a serious writing campaign. That's correct. Okay. There is, you know. There is a potential of just no one, you know, doing the paperwork correctly, but an 18-year-old, and or somebody doing the paperwork, and then it gets challenged, and there was some issue or error, and that gets thrown out, and the only person left is an 18-year-old. So all of that's possible now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So this would be no change. This would be no change. It would keep keep it at the the status quo, and you know, it's it's a common discussion. With regard to the age, there's you know the, the, the thought process or viewpoint. Well, if you're old enough to go into the military and fight for the country, you should be old enough to run for office, or old enough to do this, that. So it, it just comes down to the the board's uh, decision as to if you want to, you know, because this is leadership of the city and has substantial impact on on the, the local residents more so than just about any other elected position, you can establish those tighter requirements and say if you wanted it to be 21 as opposed to 18. So I don't think you're going to see too many 18-year-olds complaining. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I agree. So, well, so, yeah, I mean, originally I was one of the folks that uh, suggested that it stay as, as an 18-year-old, a, a legal adult. Um, but but I, I would suggest that I, I mean if this is a sticking point for us, 1821, I'm 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 fine if the board is strongly believes that there has to be a more mature candidate and 21 is the right number. Um, I'm okay if, 
I, I, you know, I, I certainly don't. I think that 18 is the right number. It's currently the number, but uh, I can understand why you, you know, we have members that, that think that it should be different, and I, I'm happy to support that if that keeps the process moving. And, and we have another majority of folks that would that would like that. We have a large percentage of our population um, little, I don't know, Lomo or older folks. And I, as far as how they feel about it, I don't know. But they would want a number 18. Would they feel uncomfortable if we're putting that down? Nobody's raised an objection to the, to the status quo, right? Nobody's objected no. to the way it currently is. We haven't, yeah, had they haven't really seen it like that before. They're going to look right. at no, this. Yeah, but, but I think they're going to. I gonna, would agree. But this this is the same as the current language. Sonny, what, did you I, have a you comment? Have I, I know. Hold on a second, Mike. Or, totally. Sonny wants to talk. Sonny? No, I was just saying I, I agree with the status quo. I, I mean, we're doing a lot of what ifs and an 18-year-old being the only one that runs and that kind of thing. I, If that were the case and our people wanted to elect them, so be it. But I, I think we're okay with of legal age, um, you know, just as it is now. That, that would be my opinion. Thank you, Sonny. Kenny? I don't know if this is the right time, but I had, I had asked the question before, and I don't really care one way or the other. But I asked, it says currently two years preceding the filing of election paper. And I asked, are we talking about any time, any two years before, or you, or the two immediately preceding years? Two years Terry, can you answer that? Preceding? Well, currently, statute reads um, one year preceding of the election right. date. But if, if so, you don't say immediately preceding, they had, if they lived here two years ago or 10 years ago for two, two years, years, then they qualify. If they currently live here and they lived here two years ago, 25 years ago, and I don't really care one way or the other, but I remember when I asked the question, it seemed like a lot of people said, no, immediately preceding, but it doesn't say that. Can you answer that, Terry? Yes. It, it should say immediately proceeding if you don't want someone to do what Ken just mentioned. Yeah, and like I said, I don't care one way or the other. Okay. If you're okay Can we have somebody... that put in there then? I think it should be immediately proceeding. Immediately yeah. proceeding? Yeah. Okay. Certainly is by me. Okay. I, I mean, it should be somebody that's representing their constituents, not somebody that's been Thank out of care. their community for 20 years. Okay. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot, so I'm sure everybody else has too, and, and have talked to um, a couple people in the, in the city just to get their opinions. And everyone that I've talked to, which hasn't been like a lot, you know, I'm talking like two or three people, they were surprised that we had 18. And um, then the other person I talked to was my 17-year-old um, granddaughter, and she said, you want somebody 18? Okay, well, that's kind of a transparent reaction. So I, I'm not, I'm like him. I'm this is not a sticking point, but I think probably uh, for me, I would be more comfortable with 21 as the more mature age to be either mayor or council person. And I agree. I think when this this a lot of people have not. We ha we've never had a charter, so like it hasn't really come up. Like I, I know all those people in the Loma, like the, the, our age bracket is older for Litchfield. I'm not just pointing out Loma, but I think with the way society is and work ethic and stuff, I just think 18 is too young. I would I would like it higher. Mike, I'm wondering if 21. Doesn't actually make it more popular with the public, right? Well, and, and wait, wait. Can you explain that, can Kenny? I want to get to you. I want to come around. No, I just wanted. I wanted him to explain what he means. I, I didn't understand. Um, just okay. with the people in Litchfield Park, kind of my uh, informal straw poll, it seems like there might be a lot of people that are that surprised that. that it was at 18. But I think if we worded it as kind of proposed. I don't think we get any pushback oh, either. Did. But like, I yeah, did. if we I had, just, had just, we you're, you're meaning support. more popular to vote for support. support. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I right. thought you meant yeah. support the other. Okay, no, no. got you. Thank you. Well, I, you heard, I, I stand on what I said. I'm, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Andrew? Uh, I mean, I said it last time this point came up. I, I think it's 25. Um, mm -hmm. I'm even more restricted. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think anybody. 21, 18, honestly, has no business running a city. 
there's some very, very talented 18 and 21 year olds. I would hope those people are in college instead or pursuing other avenues, you know, mm -hmm. they're that talented. I think it's 25, but I'm not, you know, again, I'm not going to hold this up. Would you be willing to compromise at 21? Yeah, I'd be fine. I, like I said, you know, my opinion is running a city and understanding what a city budget is, understanding, you know, the way uh, ordinances that you pass or don't pass affect your constituents. An 18 year old doesn't understand that. You know, uh, there's, they just, they don't have the life experience to understand it, um, is my personal opinion. Uh, am I going to throw my hands up at this charter if you guys put 18? No. You know, it's not, right. it's not a sticking point for me. I, like I said last time, I went after I read a lot of them, I just wanted there to be an age. So I'm like, whatever, I will go with whatever the consensus is. Susan say? I don't think that it would ever be a problem. I don't think any 18-year-old has any interest in running. Um, and I think that will never change. <clears throat> but I agree with Gay that um, by popular vote with our brain mm -hmm. residents, um, they would find 18 to be very, very cautionary. So. Suzanne? <clears throat> I was all for the higher age range to begin with. Doc? Well, I was surprised when I looked that there are so many cities, not only <coughs> here in Arizona, but also nationwide, that accept 18 as a minimum age. Um, and I don't have a problem with 18, but I also don't want to put a line in the sand where that's going to um, affect the consensus of the group here. I'm kind of a 21. Lisa Brainer, Watson? Hi, I'm here. I'm, uh, I, I agree with the consensus. I think that um, the way it's written is great. Um, and I agree with what Andrew says. I, don't, I really don't think that we're going to have a problem with a 16-year-old, God forbid, or 18-year-old um, wanting to do that either. Um, I, I think the 21 I have is probably is as we've high as we can. I'm sorry. So the question to the group now will be, do we put an age down? Are we going to put 21 down? As someone who's I, comfortable with the status quo, hold on one second. Oh, you're asking her. Lisa? Um, I, I think we do. I think we do because I've heard this uh, argument being made as well, that we need to lower the voting age. And, and I think it makes sense to put a, a low end cap on it that uh, at no point will um, – an elector younger than 18 years be eligible to run for city council and or mayor. Okay, thank you. Kenny? Then, yeah. well, I was going to say, as someone who's comfortable with the status quo, I wouldn't want to put 18 in the language <sighs> for the same reasons people have stated. They read that and they say, are you crazy? We don't, but, but if it's just qualified electors, I, I don't really care, but I would not put the age 18 in the step in that way. So can we put, leave it as the way we've written it here, but we'll put 21? What? Or no age, you mean? Well, if it's if the, you put no age, then then, then it's it, 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 18. Yeah. 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 Lisa? Yeah. <clears throat> Could uh, a question for the attorney? Could we instead put? Um, a statement in there that says uh, that gives us the right to change it via um, uh, ordinance rather than having to go to the electorate. So could we make a uh, statement that says should the right. uh, age need to be reevaluated? The city council <laughs> has the right to, by ordinance, adjust it appropriately. Because if we do that, we have two readings. We, it'll go before the public. We, they have opportunity to speak. He has. He he he's commenting. Because you're establishing the qualifications through the charter, you you wouldn't want to have. You it would be a conflict to have those qualifications be able to be changed by way of ordinance without having to go through the charter. I can tell you that some of the arguments that I've heard when this issue's come up before and other municipalities is that 21 is a, is a better age because it provides an individual a few years between high school and being able to do some college if they wanted to, whereas at 18, you could still be in high school 
If my son hadn't graduated early last year, he would still be in high school. He just turned 18 in October. He would have graduated in May. So you could have a high school senior, uh, for all intents and purposes, be on the, be on the ballot. Um, and that's just from what I've heard in, in prior discussions and stuff that the reason why they lean towards the 21 or even a little higher is that they do have that opportunity to have a few years of of that growth time between being 18, leaving home, and doing college or whatever between that and 21. Mr. Chairman, it, it feels to me like the, the group has already decided a slightly higher age. Everybody would agree to that, so it's really a matter do we put that age in the charter. And my assumption is if we're going to have higher than the de facto or, the, or rather the, yeah, the de facto age of 18, then it, we've got to state it. I agree. Yeah. They right? stated when they was 18, the other ones. They didn't just yeah. say that. So you've got to define your terms define at some it. point. Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to uh, – does anybody have any other comments? If, if you want to put 21 in there, I'm not going to object, and I'll go along. I don't Sonny, I just, what yeah, I'm are 20, you, would 20, you – 21's fine with me. I I don't think anyone would run at 18, but if you want to put a an age, 21 is perfectly fine with me and I think appropriate. Great. So right now, and I, I agree. Twenty one works for me as well. Okay. Andrew. Okay. Good. Anybody? Any other discussion on that one? So we're going to add that one, and again, we're going to come back and we're going to vote on the whole thing together on that. Perfect. Thank you. Excuse me, Chair. Uh, yes. Will you be leaving qualified oh. elector in that section as well? To read. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Okay. <coughs> Next one, and this is also on our board to-do list, um, has to do with some term limits. And I believe, Suzanne, you put together some uh, sort of a preliminary. Yes. I mean, feel free to read it. That's kind of what, what we had talked about. <coughs> So we've been back and forth, no term limits, term limits. And there was a discussion of maybe five, four terms. Um, we we had the uh, mayor was with us last time and we talked about how he, uh, somebody in that position would need to be in the position for quite a while in order to really get established in the state of Arizona and it makes sense to allow them that opportunity. Um, and that four year four four year terms at that position would certainly allow them that opportunity, but then would also allow them to term out and and prepare the next uh, generation. Um, and then same thing, I guess, with city council. I don't know. I think with city council, it also probably takes some time. Um, and again, having some term limits on that, and 4-4 four, four seemed reasonable, and that was just something that we put up there. The other point that came up, and then, well, what about our current council? We we certainly have, and our mayor, we can't just uh, have everybody cleaned out, so we would like to have some sort of a transition, and there was some joke about giving them the four four years, but that that's quite a long time, and, but wouldn't want them to phase out that rapidly. Um, I think one four-year term would be good. I I also think that maybe we should have something built in there that the mayor gets two four-year terms because I'm not sure there's anybody ready right now and I'm not sure and then if he wants to go and not not be there then that would still lose that opportunity that I just kind of thought about that today that just came up. And if, the, and if the mayor were to step down, could he start? Could he start his council member term for four for a four-year four term, council, or four four-year council member? No, no, no. Well, one he gets a one-year yeah, term on he anything. Could, he could, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, it, wait, wait. as written, there's nothing that precludes you from serving four four terms as mayor and four terms as council member after that. Well, those are the things that we wanted to come up and oh, have. So I think in. what you're asking is, could he be a council member after that? Yes, for up as to four written, additional as he currently terms. Currently, has it written, right? And then what? So then a council member then could go on and become a mayor for four years? For yeah. terms. 
Four terms. Four terms, I mean. Four, Four terms, terms. Mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Is that your intent, Susan? To, to yes. So, so 32 years total between Should mayor and council person? Should somebody desire to serve the public that long, they would have the ability to do so based on the way this is written. Well, okay. but, but those were some things that, that we're, we're going to let come back, and, right. and that's something we have to think about. Well, I, yeah. I, I agree with the way it's captured here, and I would disagree that you would make an exception for the mayor to, to serve two additional four-year terms. If he's been in four or more terms, then we don't want to catch him off guard and say, hey, this is the end. You know, end of this term, you're done. We would say you get, you could run for four more years, one additional term. I wouldn't say two more terms. And I that's that's which is what it says here, right? I want to take a mulligan on on this because I realized that I wrote for the council members that if they were serving, if they've already served their four terms or are serving their fourth term, they could seek one additional term. And I did not include that language for the mayor, okay. and that was. Uh, I just kind do of that over on the two year, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm open on that either way. I, I would want to two treat term, them I mean. uh, the same. I would yes, just, they should be the same. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also, I hold on, Andrew. Uh, so that should also be, if we want to stay with that, should be revised to reflect past council members because right now it's, it reflects only current council members. So anybody who in the past has served, uh, Peter Mahoney, for example, <laughs> his, already served his, his time should count. You know, as well, or anybody else. You know, if we're going to apply the standard to the current council, it should also apply to anybody else who's. Can we have that built in? That that can be done. Kind of said it in the first one, isn't it? it. The terms may be consecutive or not consecutive, but shall not total more than four. Right, but he's asking about the exception. If you've already served four terms, but it was a long time ago. But it says shall not total more than hold four. on one second i'd like to ask the attorney on that so that question on that so, but, he's, but uh, i think he's that's saying hold on one second you guys can we can we get an order can, can, he, can we just get yeah, i want to hear what the the attorney has to say on this if, if you want we can clarify it to where it applies to current and past it applies to oh, i think i think trying. past or past and but you don't want to have somebody that's in office who ran and is currently in office who thinks that they get to keep serving uh, get cut off. I don't I don't know why we would apply that to the past. If you've served 16 years in the past, you're done. Right? Okay, and if you've served 12, you have one more term. Right. Okay. Because that's how I, that no. is what I interpreted. Hold on, Chuck. Chuck. I think I'm a little bit against the grain on this. I'm not a real fan of term limits based on, you know, what we talked about with the, the size of our population, the people that we are going to choose from for council and mayor. And I think also we wouldn't have had the experience of Mayor Show. I mean, we articulated last time what he was able to get done by being involved in different uh, groups locally here that benefited the community. And I think it also is something that the electorate should have a choice on. If they don't like someone in that's been in three, four terms, and they vote them out. I, so Kenny, you're saying what? What, Kenny, is, your, what is? So I, I'm, I just yeah, to... I'm, I'm, I'm against term limits. Okay. In any yeah. any form at all. Right. He's yeah, saying well, that people should elect if, you, right. if they don't like you, then yeah. they don't elect yeah. you. My, my, only, just, my only comment, and, and I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other, but my only comment on that is it's hard to displace a current sitting council member. You don't have the name recognition. You don't have the funds set aside that you can use in future elections because nobody ran against you last time, so all that money's sitting there to use the next one. I'm just saying it, it's a little bit of an unfair advantage for current council members. That's the only reason I would say term limits are good. Hold on, Kenny. Well, go ahead, Chuck. Well, I was just going to say that as well, too, but then we talked about how easy it is to launch a recall process if that was something that came up uh, to, you know, to get the council member or mayor Gay. out. So. Well, I would, I would looked at, um, at Marty's suggestion and went back and looked at the qualifications and the term limits um, that, from the other cities, and um, it seems like uh, the one that I really liked was from Scottsdale, and it's three term limits for mayor, but you could have one four-year term as councilman, and but you can't have more than four term limits. So you can't have more than 16 years. 
And to me, it makes sense. It made sense, and I liked the wording of it because it reminded me of what we were talking about earlier in terms of of mentoring people along the, the track, you know, so that if somebody starts as a council member, then um, they would have four years there. They could have 12 years as mayor, and um, I, I think that's enough. Yeah. You know, I looked at a lot of the charters, but I just think Litchfield Park is just so unique, and the size of it is so small that it's hard to really, <clears throat> I mean, I will go with the grain if you guys want term limits, but I mean, for for our population and the size of our community, it's hard to look at Scottsdale or Phoenix or Goodyear because their population is so different than ours and they have more people to draw from. And in the past, you know, past, we've had to get, we've had to like really encourage people to run. You know, it's not like there's a huge pool that, you know, people, you can say, oh, yeah, I, oh, I have this person in mind. Oh, they're, they're going to run for city council. But then they never fill out the paperwork. And then there's only one person running. So it's it's a matter, it's just, it's the pool that we're, that we're, our, our residents, you know, want to complain, but I don't know if they're really wanting to run, to put My, the time in. Yeah, I don't know what problem it is that exists right now that we're trying to solve. I, I don't think term limits are necessary. I think I there's either. plenty of empty spots. People I are agree. constantly trying to be pulled into running this yes. for city council, and we can't, we, just to get two people to run against each other is a big enough problem. So the opinion that was expressed at a different meeting was you might not have people running because it's very hard to run against an incumbent. These are empty have... spots, though. Yeah. We can't get people to run against empty spots. Yeah, go ahead, Lisa. Open. Lisa. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Kenny, I'd like to address what Kenny's saying about being hard to run against a seated council member. You know, um, in a in a bigger city where you have to do some major advertising, I can see that that's the case. But in our little Litchfield Park, I've used the same signs for the last two two elections and they're fine. I've never had to pay a dime to do anything else other than buy my initial signs and stakes. Um, and I, I frankly think that, you know, we were just talking about age, that we could have a 21 year old starting to serve. Well, do the math. If we get a 21 year old in there and they turn out to be just a really great candidate, great council member or mayor, 16 years later, they're 37. And we're saying you can't participate in this as a 37 year old. I, to me, that I, I understand that the concept is we don't want a kingdom where someone is, becomes the the king of, of Litchfield Park or queen of Litchfield Park, but I just, I, I'm really kind of feeling like term limitations are best handled by the voters, and I think that it's an easy thing to do. I, it's all of, all of the communication that we've done in, in elections has been basically through the newspaper when they interview everybody or at the uh, Meet the Candidates Forum, which the city sponsors. Um, and I, I really feel like it's a pretty open process. Um, I, I just, I, I think I would support no term limits rather than term limits just because of the age thing. Um, I, I would hate to see us say, you know, to someone who's not even 40 yet, you're done. Sonny, do you have a comment? Yeah, I, I think at the beginning I said I don't think we really need term limits, but if we were to have them, the 16 <clears throat> seems, you know, good. But again, uh, if if we would have had that, then our current mayor would have already had to resign at the end of this year. <laughs> if we would have had that, he was elected. Mr. City Manager, Mr. Chairman, if I could add what Sonny was saying. Sonny, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So I'm going to speak with the mayor if he was here. Hopefully you he wouldn't mind. So the mayor was on the very first council in 1987 when I was four years old. He was on the Board of Education for years while his kids were in school. He's been mayor since 2006. He's currently on his fifth term as mayor. 
So the way this is written right now, he couldn't run again. Mm -hmm. If he's going to run again at the next time, from my conversations with him, depending on who's running, who's running for it. Wait a minute. Just to clarify, he could run again for one more four-year oh, term. Well, no, no we, we, we would have that built the in as the ground is, If you've already reached, or I think it needs to say four or more, not just four. Right. So right. It, right. Okay. So I think it should say four or more. If it's a current council member, you get to serve one more term. Right, and I think that was the intent. So my point is, he gets to run for four more years, and he sat right there and said, 20 years is a long time to be mayor. And he could run for council member again if he really wanted to participate. So let's just make sure we have the facts right. He gets four more years, which would be 24, and then 16 more years after that as a council member. Okay. So he would have a total of 40 years in office okay. possible. Okay, thanks, Kenny. Because the, the way it's written currently, it says four. So if it said four or more, that covers. We would have that if it was if we if the, we went to four four, then he would have four another term for one more four more two. Right, that just has to say I four. I mentioned four that more. that was an oversight on my yeah. part. Yeah, okay. I threw out two, but I think one was good. Um, Andrew, I'm in favor of term limits. Yeah, I kind of started this conversation the last time we it came up. Um, I am generally of the belief that uh, even small government, local government is renewed with new people and new ideas. Um, I think it's beneficial for the community to see our leaders recognize that they have a set period of time in which they contribute to this. And part of their job as leaders is to identify the next generation of leaders, to train them, to show them how the city operates, to encourage them to run. Again, I, you know, we've had this debate on, you know, we don't have people that step into these shoes, and I think it's it's not for lack of qualifications. You know, Litchfield Park is one of the highest median incomes in the Phoenix area as far as cities go. There are lawyers, there are doctors, there are engineers, there are uh, educators, there are really, really smart people <coughs> in this city, um, and you know, there is a lot of work for this city council, but it is not the city of Phoenix in terms of workload. I think that it is a benefit to our city to have new people run, to have new people sit in those seats. And I think 16 years, I mean, that's a generation. You're, you're talking one generation. Uh, you know, that's a long time. Uh, you know, Will said, you know, if you can't get anything done in 16 years, what are you doing? Um, I'm in favor of term limits. I could go to 20. I'd be fine with that. But I just, I do feel like the turnover is good for government. Uh, it's good to have new ideas. It's good to have people that think differently about various issues. Litchfield is pretty homogenous. You know, we can be honest that most of the people in this city want the city to look the way the city looks and will continue to look, has looked for many years and will continue to look that way. But, you know, every single person looks at every issue slightly differently. And I think that's a very good thing for a city to have, uh, to have new ideas coming in and new perspectives. So I'm in favor of term limits. Uh, you know, I will not hold this up if the general agreement that, if, you know, we think that the voters should be the ones to decide, you know. I will say name recognition is a big thing in Litchfield Park. Uh, I can tell you that because I was the lowest vote getter uh, for the freeholder position. I haven't lived here very long and I have a name that's not very well recognized. The, those of you who have been here for a long time and have recognizable names, you got a lot of votes behind you. You know a lot more people, you've been here a long time, but just your name alone carries a lot of weight. Um, and I, I don't think that should be discounted. Martin? I kind of, yeah, I agree with what you said. I was going to say that too, is I think it's the opposite. Sorry, Lisa. So what you said, I think it's more important. It's harder here because there's more, we're a smaller community. Name recognition is huge. So when somebody gets going, and I, you can just look at the way the council, well, I mean, I'm sure we all ran, but there's a lot of names that were recognized. Um, I think it, it helps to have that great recognition, especially in a small town. Um, so I think that's, you know, when the mayor said 16 years was long enough, that made me feel like, okay, we're hearing it from somebody who's been here and doing that for a long time. So I'm generally in favor of some term limits. And I also, like I said, I read a lot of the other charters. They have uh, most of them. I maybe I'm wrong, but had term limits. Yeah. And uh, so I think that we're going to have expansive compared to everybody else. If we do four, it's a lot more than most people are doing. And so that's Susan Fix. So <clears throat> I'm kind of 
is because, you know, if you look historically, our mayor and our vice mayor wouldn't have been able to do what they've done um, for our city if we had these limits in place. Um, and name recognition, yes, that is that is part of the the politics, right? Um, the more people you know, the more the more votes you get. Um, but I I don't think that our small city needs term limits. I think that the younger people will start to get you know their roots settled here, and you know they just need to participate. If that's the case, they need to get a, get on a board. They you know, volunteer with the city in some shape, you know, some fashion. But I don't think term limits um, is just going to bring people up. And well, even if even if we had 20 years, somebody that's young that wants to run against somebody that's been there 16 years, it's still going to be just intimidating. And then they'll run again. But that young person will have the opportunity. To, it just gets them more exposure. And, you know, what if, what if we don't have enough people and now you've got – your council and your mayor, their 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 time's up. You don't have enough people, so. So that's just a what if. Yeah. That's like a not real thing because we've never not had a full council, right? Okay. So to say that is like we can we can borrow any kind of trouble. Right. And it's you're looking for when we look back, it's never happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, then we, we are now. One one hold on one second. And we are writing something that's for the future as well. We need to think about that. I'd like to hear from Bobby on this. I think 16 and 20 years is actually like no term limit. I mean, it, we're going in the direction of, like Frazier was saying, as far as the youth stuff comes in. I think how the city is so unique. I mean, the mayor, you, we're not probably not going to see anybody like the mayor ever again. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, and there's a lot of, like, you guys were just students just saying get, get your roots into the ground and you new people. It's going to go that way. Mm -hmm. Justin James is sitting right there. Justin James is going to be a mayor. He loves to be in control of everything. And <laughs> he's coming now and, and, and you know, uh, Tom's already kind of probably rearing him that way. So, I mean, he gets in younger and then now, like Frazier said in the process, I feel like, you know, what we've been talking about, um, kind of, Showing the ways, older people showing the ways with younger people, and kind of, if we can't put that in there, then I mean, we're already we're kind of, it's like that's what our name is, Litfield is like doing that right now already. So maybe by doing that, it kind of forces the incumbents that, well, yeah, you got to get your replacement in there. Yeah. You need to, right. a person that you want, yeah, let's help them get those signatures. Chairman? Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, just a couple of thoughts. First, so <clears throat> I, I, I'm not interested in dying on this hill either. I, you, you, yeah. made great, you made great points both ways. I would suggest, so, so I don't come from a civil servant's background. I haven't spent a great deal of time in municipal service. So there are aspects of this that I clearly don't get, and, and I, I'll take that, you know, I, I clearly understand that and, and preface my comments with that. But I, I come from the private sector. And, and part of your responsibility as a leader is succession planning. Right. And, and let me tell you, to find somebody in, in, in senior leadership for longer than 16 years is, is a mass. It's, it's, that, that is becoming a unicorn mm -hmm. as opposed to otherwise. A succession plan is required. And I'll just finish with this. If, if we're going to accept this the way Suzanne has written it, what are we talking about? You're talking about 32 years. Why are we even having this conversation? I mean, 32 years, everybody should be, I mean, that's, that's tantamount to, to no term limits. And I'm okay with that, too. But, but I'm, I'm not suggesting that's wrong. I'm just saying I don't know if we should be busting our head mm -hmm. over term limits, no term limits, if we accept the verbiage the way it is, which I'm prepared to, if everybody is comfortable with that. And forgive me, I don't want to start a wrestling match. I think that's extreme, but, but I'm okay, again, when we consider the size of our, our our city, when we consider all of the things that are all fair points and valid points that have been brought up in support of no term limits, I get that. And you know, part of politics, I'm 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 on board. Yeah. Do you think this allows for the that succession? Uh, if yeah. it doesn't, we have the wrong leadership in the first place. 
and, and perhaps that might be something we want to introduce in this document, what our expectations are from a standpoint of, of mentorship and succession planning. Because the mayor, our current mayor, is a unicorn. We will not see that person again. And, and if that's what we're hoping for, I, I think that is we're, we're, we're charging up a, a hill we're not going to take. We have to prepare in the, in the circumstance that we don't see a mayor like Tom again. That's going to be the higher percentage odds occurrence. But, and, and how do we plan for that? Suzanne? Can I share my thoughts? As yes. somebody, I, I know I drafted this, but I was in favor of term limits for many of the reasons that Andrew mentioned. And then also, um, I know that people fear change. And this is a change. It's not a huge change, though, because 32 years is still a long time to serve. But I don't think we should fear this change. I'm going to say what I said last meeting. I, I, at the very first meeting, I said there should be no term limits in a small town. You're lucky to get people to run. We took our vote. I voted no term limits. But since then, I've listened to people much younger than me who have said it intimidates people that are running. It's hard to get people to mentor. I've listened to all that, and I've changed my perspective. I'm like, I'm not going to die on the hill. I thought this was a reasonable compromise. It's not two terms, which the mayor spoke against and said, oh, my gosh, you can't, a small town like this, you can't limit it to two terms like everybody else does. I, and this is four, year, four terms as mayor, four years as council member, 32 years old. I thought this was a good compromise to at least say we have some limit. But... Um, I'd like to ask the attorney, is this something that would go through, could legally be okay? Yeah, I mean, you guys absolutely have the ability to establish term limits and parameters for those, those term limits. So, pretty much a, a full board of freeholders decision, and uh, I'll refrain from sharing my opinion on that matter. But, uh, and we'd be adding two words or more. Well, two two words. Yes. Or yes. More, after yeah. four, so four or more yeah. terms. Four who have already served four or more terms. Okay. Get yeah. one more term. Yes. Yeah. I would say that if the board is inclined to to go with this language, in addition to the four or more terms, my thought was to include something that you know the elected for four uh, council members shall serve no more than four terms. These terms may can be consecutive or non-consecutive, but shall not total more than four. This limitation includes service that occurred prior to the adoption of the charter. Oh. To make it clear that this applies to Pass. everybody who yeah. previously served on the as a mayor or council member. Yeah, and then Suzanne said the language she has, the exception for council members, should be repeated. Right, and then the we would include the same language for the mayor. Yes. Yeah. And get that quick over. And the mayor just wrote. are you? <laughs> did you? <laughs> I <already> object. <laughs> You're no I'm longer not mayor. Um Lisa, would you be would you go along with the group on this one? I I'll go along with the group on whatever you guys decide. And when when I made my comment, it was not it was just to make sure we looked at it from all points of view. I think the one thing we haven't talked about is the fact that we are kind of looking at other cities as examples and they pay their council members. I think our goal with term limits was to make sure we didn't make this a career job. But because we're unpaid, nobody can step in and, and consider it a career lifetime job opportunity. So I think that's one more thing to consider. But yeah, I, absolutely, I'll go along with whatever the the mass says. Sonny, I agree. <clears throat> can, can you tell me what the consensus is somewhere? You came at a great time. Suzanne, do you want to no, go? I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Mayor. We'll, we'll. So the term limits for mayor are four four year terms with currently serving mayors eligible to seek one additional term for re-election. 
And then the same thing uh, applies for council members. Council members can serve four four-year terms. And then currently serving council members or council members who have like served their four terms can, one for, can run for one additional term. That excludes previous council members who have already served four terms and are no longer on the council. So the term limits are basically 16 years for council members, 16 years for mayor, and should the mayor serve the full 16 years, the mayor then would be eligible to run for council for 16 years and vice versa. I guess the only thing I would say is when I get when I complete the term I'm in, it would be very close to 20 years, I'm going to guess. And I, and I, I don't really fixate on exactly when I got elected, but I believe that I got elected sometime in 2006. That's correct. And so I will, and I will serve through all of 26. If you don't plan on running for re-election, then we don't have to put that extra right. one that's term in there. <laughs> and I, and I'm going to tell you, so you understand exactly my position today. And if, if you want to choose differently, I'm okay with it. Either way, I have been there long enough, and I'm not going to argue with anybody who says we should get a we should get a new mayor because we need new blood or you're getting too old or whatever. I'm not I'm not going to throw a fit about that and say you know God I'm. I've done just this huge job. My concern right now is the focus of the city, for the most part, the, the, the core thing that we're trying to make successful is the uh, downtown square, Litchfield Square. If, you know, if it gets to the point, so your language now would prevent me from rerunning. No, no. 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 So we're going to change it. No, we're, no, we talked about modifying it. allow you to run for one additional four-year term. Even though I'm after 26. Because I'm going to be, I'm going to be at 20 No, we, we were going, going to put that wording in there that would allow you that term. Yeah, yeah. And I would ask you to do that only because I can tell you that when I look at the scenarios that may happen in the future, and I look at them, I do look at them all the time, there are certain scenarios that I believe would be very bad for the city if they were to come together, these scenarios would be very bad if I didn't run. Okay. If, you, if this group and the citizens say I shouldn't run, I'm okay with that. But I'm going to tell you that there are some scenarios where there are some scenarios where it could be a problem for the city to complete Litchfield Square and to do it in a way that would be good for the residents. That was so never our intent. What's that? No, and I don't think it is your time, and I'm not saying it is. I'm just, you know, I'm just <coughs> telling you from an insider view is, so it would be a, I think it would be a mistake if you made it so that either myself or Paul Faith could not run again, because Paul Faith is already, he's way over 16 years. No, so this way he would, both, he would I think still both be of able us to. are very important. They're, I think they're both, we're both very, very important. Potentially, in a different, it, it's about different right. scenarios. There it's are some like scenarios. It's like a continuity. It's, not, it's a continuity it, thing. Well, it is a continuity, and, it's, and, and, it, and we are, as a city, we are either tremendously financially sustainable or we've got a problem. The, the, so the need, language will be that both you and Paul, even though you've done more than four terms, would have the opportunity at the end of your term to run for another four-year term. You, Paul then would still be eligible for four, for four years for mayor, and yeah, you could go would back great. to city council. But what was the language you were adding? Now read him the language you were adding. Again, if, if, if you're if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. I just my only concern is that I think it is important for the citizens, and, I, and I'm trying not to be self-centered and egotistical about this, but I think it's important for the citizens <coughs> that in this next election, both Paul Faith and I have the ability to run again because there are scenarios where it is We had that built important. in, that we have that built in there. Yeah. If it's built in, yes. yeah. if it's built in, 16 years is plenty. Yeah, Andrew? So, uh, I was just talking with Matt here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you'd be, able, you'd be eligible as written through 2030, to, to serve through 2030. So, That's way too long. <laughs> and then uh, Paul Faith would be eligible to serve through 2028. So he's up yeah. for re-election in 24. And then he, he can run for four years. He would have four terms as mayor if he wanted. You're up for re-election in 26. You could be re-elected in 30. 
I think Paul's up in 26. Yeah, so it's saying. four or more terms. So if you've served yeah. four this or thing, more I think terms. Paul and I are both up in the same year. Okay, so then you can both, as written, go through 2030. And, that, and that's fine. I mean, literally, I, it's whether I run again or not is going to be very dependent upon different things that will happen over the next several years, two years. So it, it, and it's all going to be about what do I think is best for the residents of the city. So if I have that option, then I would be very happy. Are we in consensus on this one now? I think so. So but, yeah. All right. So, with yeah. the suggested draft, with the, the with the add the few mm -hmm. additions that you yeah. added that allows for the, for yeah, the mayor. Yeah. It acknowledges one. It allows for the current sitting mayor council that have already exceeded four years to run for one yes. four year term, but then also clarifies that the four year term limitation uh, includes service that occurred prior to the adoption of the charter, so that if somebody had served three terms before, they could come back and serve one term, but not four more terms. Correct. Is what my understanding is. Good. That's right. All right, good. Very good. So, if you want to think, this, this is Penny. One, this is real ticky tacky, but it says serve four okay. terms. Okay. I gotta wait for the I think he's taking the check. He's gonna do that, and then Kenny, this is just a preliminary. You're say all or part of, I'm just looking at me personally. I was able to serve two terms, I had to leave. I assume that counts as, as a full term. I was elected for a full term, only even though I was only allowed to serve two years. So the serve, if you didn't serve, I, all or part of four terms. I would say if you're elected, you only got to serve part of it, that counts. That's a term. Counts against you, right? It, it's ticky-tacky, but you know this is the language people will look at. I agree. Okay. I think so it's, well, it's, it's up to you. Do you guys want to have that limitation that if somebody didn't serve a full term, they served two years of a right. four-year term? So I served a full term, then I served two years, and I had to leave. I count that as two full terms, all or part of two terms. So those two terms are gone. What are you because suggesting? The, all or part. Yeah, okay. The other, the other, Andrew, the other, Andrew, the, Andrew. I'd say elected, if we're going that route, elected terms as opposed to appointed terms. Okay, whatever you want to do, but I'm just saying. Well, again, you, we'll have the opportunity to fine tune that. Kenny. I'm just telling him yeah. you have to fine tune the language to say whether or not a, a partial term counts as having served a term, and I think it should count. Okay. The, the way it's written with, and I'm just focusing on council members, council members shall be elected for a term of four years. Council members shall serve not more than four terms. So in, you're saying shall not. Uh, shall serve not more than you can't resign one day part yes. of four terms. You can't resign one day before your and term and say I didn't serve a full term, I get another election. To somebody who was appointed to fill your remaining two years. Right. However you want to handle it. Just so yeah, that we'll have so this clear that so no, we'll no questions have, in the That's just the draft. We're not this is not our final final. Okay. 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 Okay, just one more thing for everybody here to understand. So you if you you're supporting term limits which is going to limit the number of terms that the people who are interested in being on council can serve today. So everyone here who supports this, you are responsible to either come and serve, run for election, or find two other people who will run for election. It is critical that we have people from the community who care about it serve. 14 potential candidates, right? Message received, Lima Charlie. Kenny's going back in. <clears throat> Agreed. Kenny's qualified. Very good. Oh. Kenny's got eight more Thank years. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <laughs> I'm doing the best. So we're moving right along. You've got eight more years. Yeah. <laughs> we've finished with the terms. We've finished with uh, Section 5, Section 6. Moving into section duties of the mayor, is it all right if the mayor is here? Does anybody have a problem with that? You're going to give me duties? There has to be a line somewhere. I'm going to take out the request to provide pizza for all you. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the edits in section 10 about the vice mayor that was just with the designation, every two-year designation. 
we're okay with that change. We talked about that before. And then the compensation we took out. We took out. Moving into section 12, A, B, C. We didn't do a whole lot there. Fourteen, They deleted the line on the medical, mentally incapacitation and all that. We thought we didn't need that. Okay. Moving into section 16 again, did the same thing. Changed some wording in section 18. Suzanne, did you have a question? No. Okay. Any other questions in Article 2? A question came up after a meeting the other Kenny? day. That you, does it currently say anywhere that you have to meet at least once a month? I thought it did say you have to meet once a month, but then I was told that sometimes the meetings are just canceled. So you go more than a month without meeting. And I wanted to know if that was in here or should be in there or that should not be in there? It should, it should be in there that it can, if that's possible. I, I just know that most cities, even when they can't meet, they have a, they schedule a phone meeting just to say we met once a month. And if it's, I just want to know if it says it or doesn't say it. Yeah, we do not do that. Do not do, do not do what? We, we have a meeting in the summer that normally is canceled. Right. Usually it's in August because there is a convention of the League of Cities and Towns. Mm -hmm that many council members go to, and it's about the same time that we have our normal meeting. So we cancel our normal meeting in the summer for that reason. We also, on occasion, will cancel a meeting in December. It depends on what we have and what's going on. So it, and, and there's, there literally is nothing wrong. It doesn't mean the council's not working for the people and you know, putting in their service time. It's just sometimes it's convenient if you don't have to have a meeting, then you don't call a meeting to come together and okay. do nothing. And, and I don't have so, a feeling one way or another. I just wonder if it's in here, and if it is in here, then I want, well, from what you just said, you would rather it not be in here. Whatever is in there, it needs to allow the council the discretion to cancel its normal meeting. Okay, so I don't think, I haven't so seen it. Schedule, yeah, it's not in here. Meeting, and we schedule a normal meeting, so we're now, We've changed it, but okay. in our council procedure, our, we normally have one meeting a month, right. and it's on the third Wednesday of each month. Okay. And then as we go through the year, we decide if there are specific meetings we want to cancel. Right. Okay, so the, the charter doesn't specify how often the council has to meet. And we're good with that? Okay. Yep. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. And were there any questions with regard to the removal of Section 21 on the failure to the language? Yes, I had a question on that. What we did we never really came to an agreement that failure to vote was positive or negative. Failure to vote if you if you don't have it specified, then basically what happens is we follow Robert's rules. And Robert's rules provide that if, if there's a failure to vote an abstention, it's essentially it's a non vote. So it says that that individual that individual did not vote. So if you have five people at a meeting Three people are voting yay, one person's voting nay, and the fifth person abstains, it's a 3-1. I like that idea. So it, it doesn't count at all. So the, the, 
the arguments back and forth are, well, if you're on the council, you should be required to take a position with regard to every matter that comes before council. So there are some jurisdictions that require council to vote and that if you abstain from voting, then that is considered an affirmative vote unless you've declared a, an actual conflict. And then there's others that say that if you abstain from voting, that's essentially a no vote. But I, I like the way Robert's rules is, is whereas if you abstain from voting, because there could be a number of unforeseen reasons as to why an individual would abstain from voting, because they may not have a, a legal conflict, but if you've got, for example, your best friend comes before the, the, the council seeking approval of something and you know that you can't be biased and, and you want to avoid an appearance of impropriety, you just you abstain from voting so that doesn't count, but it wouldn't necessarily be a, conf, a, a legal conflict that would abstain you from voting. So, Council question on, on that. Well, if, in the event that, is the, does the council have a mechanism in the event that was weaponized? Does the council have a, a mechanism for uh, for dealing with that, such that we don't have to speak to it in the in the charter? Because I'm assuming you could use that, you could weaponize that as well. Well, and this doesn't prohibit the mayor and council from establishing additional requirements in their council rules and, and procedures that would clarify that you know if if the mayor and council wanted to put in the the rules and procedures and, and identify an alternative to what the, the standard Roberts rules, they would be able to do that. It just wouldn't be a requirement of the charter. Cool. That's they, they can hand, if somebody they can handle that if it became an issue. Because you could have a situation where you have <clears throat> okay, you, you've got seven individuals at a at a council member a council meeting. You've got two individuals who vote yay, one that votes nay, and then four that abstain. So that would still be a positive affirmative vote because you had two to one because under the rules you look at the, the majority of those who voted on the issue, but then you had four that abstained for some reason. So it my, my concern would be more about you've got five council members, two vote yay, two vote nay, one abstains because he's waiting to politic for one group to gain his vote. Right, and, then, and then in that case, that's weaponized. The matter would would die because it, it doesn't pass because it doesn't have an affirmative number of votes. It dies as it is treated as a. Uh, well, you wouldn't want to have it where he abstains and he knows it's an affirmative too. So he's basically. So so this language is taken out, which is good. I, I think yeah. counting it in the affirmative was ridiculous. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, and, and the council can take care uh, of it. No, just, just to give you a counterpoint. The problem is does come up, but can come up. Fortunately, in our councils, it really has been relatively rare where we've, where we've had a three to three or a three to four or a four to three kind of vote. But it does, it does, and it can come up. So if you've got a very political issue, which on occasion some of these issues are very difficult, and it's three to three, and somebody says, well, "I'm going to abstain." The easiest way, I, I don't like abstentions. I think if you're on the council, you need to take a vote, period. And, and I understand there can be occasions where your best friend's got something going on, but I can tell you in 15, 16 years, I've very seldom seen any of that. What you see is a situation where residents are divided. you got business entities that are you know, pushing one, one side or the other, and people don't want to be pointed out as taking a stand. Like, well, no, well, you, you have to vote. That's why you're here. You need to vote. And I don't want to hear extension like that. So if you say, if you abstain, then your vote is positive. What it does is it stops somebody from letting something die by abstaining. Okay? If it's three to three and you abstain, your vote is recorded as positive and it's going to pass. And if you want it to not, if you think in your judgment it shouldn't pass, you need to cast your vote. <coughs> vote against it. So now it dies four to three. Don't just let it be three to three and we're going to say your vote doesn't count. No, but I and understand I don't there's like other that. ones that put it as it's a negative vote. Abstention is a negative vote. But, and I'm okay with that. I, I, 
But I don't think I don't think it should just die. Okay. Your vote is one or the other. You're on the council. You need to vote. I, I'm just. I, I, it can be either one because it makes you do something. Your your vote's going to be recorded one way or the other. You can't just sit there and say King's X. I want a timeout. No, he, the timeouts he, are. He, open. Could, he said he could build that in there where the council could make that change. Well, yeah, I'm saying if it's not in the charter, then it follows Robert's rules unless those rules are modified by the rules and procedures of the council. So the council still has the ability to modify the Roberts rules, and, and the council can put in the rules and procedures this very same language. Right. It's we just not something that would be in the charter. The council needs to do that. Right? Okay. If we haven't done it, and we may not have, because it doesn't come up very often. But it has on occasion come up, and I thought we had, I thought we had a rule. But maybe we we might. Know. I would have to look. But I'm just saying that the council can handle the charter. It, we'll it, we'll let the charter the council have the flexibility. Let the charter just be be silent. Let the let the council, the council address it. You know, that that is, it is not okay just to have it be. You can have a timeout. Okay. All right. Very good. Are we good on that? Yeah. yeah. Anything else on Article Two? So. I would like to call for an executive session only because this is, we need to, we're talking about the city manager and he's president and the mayor's here. And I just, I think there's maybe some uncomfortable. I think they're kicking us out. Of the <laughs> so, <laughs> just for this one section, though, you can come back. It won't take that long. How long is it going to take? Because Five I, minutes. I, mean, I came down here to congratulate you for getting through the process. At <laughs> 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 I'm going to miss dinner and make my wife mad. <laughs> no, you know we're that? giving you an out. Which in, in fact, it's... All right, I'm going to work on emails. Sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you back to Thank you. And for that, we would just, for the record, have a motion to go into executive oh, session. Oh, can I, can I, is there anybody, what, does anybody think we need to go in executive session and discuss this next section? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Joe, you're going to your third Second. Yeah. Okay, any discussion? <coughs> Excuse me, Chair. Yeah. Who moved and seconded? Uh, Will made the motion and uh, Chuck seconded. Thank you. All those in favor? Or any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So the motion passes. So we are now in an executive session. Okay, and I will please give you... pause for a second so we can stop the recording. Stop the recording. Okay. Anybody want to take a break? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a let's take a five minute break though. Thank you. I'll give you ninety seconds. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, Terry. So. Terry. Terry, can you hear me? Board member Brainerd Wasson. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? I see that Terry is um, muted right now. She might um, went on a break as well. Okay, so she heard they went on a break. Are you? Did you need something, or do you want to wait? Until um, she I think I'm going to tag out on this meeting and spend some time with the kids here this evening. So okay, I will let them know. We've hit all the big important, the, not the big, but the ones that I was really okay. wanting to be engaged. I will with. note it right now, and then when she comes back on, I'll let her know. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye.
Okay. okay. Good. Are you here with us, Sonny? Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's get going. We're on Article 4, Appointment of Boards and Commissions. Or, excuse me, Article 5. Page 12 on the latest. We had made some addition uh, changes, uh, just some minor changes in uh, B and C. Those are reflected here on this one. This is ticky tack again, but instead of between five and seven, should we just say five or seven? You, you don't want an even number of commission commissioners voting. I don't know any commissions that have even numbers. Mayor, five or seven? Or? Five or seven is good. Six is bad. Okay. <laughs> we'll just have that language and reflect that. Do, you, do we need to say a minimum of five? Just just say shall consist of five, five, or, or, seven. five or seven. Yeah. Because it says shall consist. And then we also give council... Uh, the the power to establish. They, don't they get to, unless otherwise provided, uh, or by ordinance. Yeah, so they can change it by ordinance if they want to. Yeah. Okay. If they can change it, then just say not less than five. Between, yeah. We, well, we, we went through all that, and Sonny was very adamant that we should use five he, or seven. He thinks seven is very important. And yeah. I, I, I'm, right. It's better to have seven, but in the event that we, you only have five, it was five. So five or seven. And then, good. unless otherwise changed. Okay. Are we good through Article 5? Yes. Okay. Moving on into Article 6, Finance and Taxation. I think we had some stuff on that, Suzanne, that you had talked to with um, City? Yes. Um, Paige? And, well, as she's uh, pulling up the changes that we made on the screen, I... On this draft, you do not see the changes that we talked about last time reflected here. So um, on the, or no, this is my draft. Okay. Um, so these are the, can you scroll back up really fast, please? Okay, so these are incorporate the changes that we talked about last time with regard to the taxing powers. And then if you scroll down, um, we've reorganized a bit of this. So that the next thing um, we discussed was the bond limitations that now has been changed to debt issuance limitations. And um, this was written and uh, consulted with Paige on, on this. And so if you have any questions about this, um, please ask. 15%. Um, right now, it's 10%, close to 10%. The, the close to 10%. Debt. Mm -hmm. The existing debt. And then 15% is still conservative, but allows for um, excess debt that may we may need to issue related to um, the 
new park project. So that's what that's where that's coming from. Mayor, do you have any thoughts on this? Well, I can't. You know, I can't see the uh, the percentages, and I haven't talked to the percentages. You know, the, the actual percentage with Paige. The concern that I had was that we are, as a city, we are in a very good financial position today because we have been very careful about how much we spend versus how much we're taking in. And so it's not like a really complicated concept. Um, You'd be surprised. <laughs> but one of the really interesting things is that because we have always been pretty conservative about what we spend versus what we take in, that it is very easy for the city to have bond fight to get a bond. And if we want to borrow money, we can go borrow money. And it's relatively easy to do that. And we don't have to go to go get approval because we just we pledge, you know, sales tax or something. And the bonding companies will limit what we can pledge up to a certain percentage or they won't give us a good rating and then we can't sell bonds easily. So there are some there are some limitations that are built into the system that are outside of the you know the, the political limitations for council might feel or legal limitations. But so my concern in this was that we we forced the council not to go above a certain percentage of free cash flow, basically, to finance bonds without going to get voter approval. So I'm not sure how that was translated by Paige into something that's put in the charter. But that was the concept of what I had hoped we put in was that we limit, it's not a problem to go and get debt to pay for capital expenses going forward so long as you don't incur so much debt that your cash flow can't easily cover it. If you, you know, if you make the mistake of getting your cash flow, if so much of your cash flow is committed to things, then if something comes up, you literally you start risking the financial sustainability of the city. And that's what I did not want any council to have the ability to do without getting voter approval. And it was trying to walk a line between when, when can just the council go get a bond, go borrow some money, versus when do they have to get voter approval to get the bond? And the, you know, in the past, what's happened for the last 20 years, basically, well, Faith and I said, no, we're not borrowing money, period. We're going we're gonna to finance all this stuff just with cash flow we've got. We're not going to go borrow money. And, and that's been okay because we've had enough influence on the council. But that may not be true in the future. You may get a mayor that wants to spend, you know, wants to spend, or a vice mayor wants to spend, the council wants to spend. So I thought the charter should have some limitation on being able to borrow money without going to get voter approval. I think this speaks to it, right? I mean, 15 so, percent. Again, I don't know what the numbers are, so I'm looking at page because this we translated that. that concept in different ways, and I'm. Ostensibly, this would uh, require voter approval if we wanted to raise that above 15%. A Carter amendment. Yes. Mr. City Manager, how, do you, what do you think of this language? Mr. Chairman, I would agree with the policy that takes a draft in Good. Cool. I, I have just one question where, where it talks about what kind of debt you can issue. And at the end, it says, and all other debt types. I, I don't know. Say and all of it. What are we talking about? 
So it says you may issue geo bonds, revenue bonds, leases, and it says issue. So it's only talking about debt to be issued. So to a bank and borrowing money, this is this is just bonds. Because when you're talking about issue, you're only issuing bonds, right? Mayor, if you went right. to the bank and said, we just want to take a loan, you're not issuing anything. You're just borrowing money. But that's that's the header, right? Right. Debt, debt issuance limitation. So we're speaking specifically about Yeah, I'm not sure why it says that. So And so that's what I'm asking. Are you saying we can issue and the cost of repaying those issuance will not exceed 15% of the annual operating. But if we just go borrow money from a bank, we can borrow a whole bunch more money. I don't think that's what we're trying to say. No, I, I, think, um, I think at the last meeting I was at, we went back and forth with the bond limitation and the overall debt. Yeah. So I think it should be overall debt. Yeah, I think this should not be debt issuance. This should be debt, debt. right? And it should be the repayment of all debt will not exceed 15% of annual budget, which is what you're saying. Yeah. But it's all debt, not just things that you issue. So I, I and then so we so like debt limitations. So the title would be debt limitations. Debt limitations. Mm -hmm. And the and then rather than good. say you may issue debt including geo bonds, revenue bonds, leases, and other debt, I, I would I don't know. However you want to say that, just to say you know you can borrow money by issuing sure. those types of securities, mm -hmm. or you can just borrow money. It, it, you know, without issuing anything. But the total service will not will, yeah. will not I, exceed I like the 15%. Concept. If everybody's comfortable with 15%. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, um, it, the, and the mayor and the city manager seem to be comfortable. Are you comfortable with the 15%? I am, yeah. because I have trust. Yeah. So, okay. so I would just say this is all debt, not just debt issued. Any borrowing, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that just we'll needs to be cleaned however, up. However you want to work. Yeah, yeah you can just clean up the language on that. There that all other debt types that covers yeah, this, you're so going out, yeah, but it's under the heading of issuance, issuance and it's and the beginning that's of the sentence is taking out issuance. You don't issuance. issue a loan; you borrow money. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying that the title would be debt limitation, right? That's right. Issuance. And so the beginning of the sentence, in accordance, may issue debt. It, it says may it's issue debt, debt. Like may it. borrow money. Is okay, Suzanne, like did yeah. you? Is there anything else that you want to go through on that? Yeah. Um, yes. So if you'll scroll down. Um, uh, in section C, you can see there under section four, paragraph C, um, we had talked about that <coughs> even being included. So um, I page did not have any issues with that being removed. Um, in this case, we don't really have the enterprise funds that you know we've talked about. Other cities have so, and that that seemed to be more geared towards that type of fund, right, Paige? Yes, I, okay. I don't think it hurts the. I just don't think it's a situation where we're here. Yeah, it, it's hard. You guys are good at fifteen percent. I'm good at fifteen percent because it's very limiting, and you have to get a charter amendment. But I'm I'm just thinking in the future the wigwam comes to us and says all these water rights. They're going to take them away from us because a private golf course can't have water rights. We want to give them to the city so you can uh, own those water rights. And we'll go halves with you on building a water reclamation plant so that you can water the golf course. And we say that would require so much debt, we, it would be too much for us. We, we can't exceed this limit. So I, who knows what might happen in the future? That's just off the top of my head. Yeah, this, so, this charter limitation on 15% on needs to be that if you want to go, it's not that you can't go above 15%. <clears throat> But to go above 15%, then it needs to go to the voters for approval. Charter yeah. amendment. Yes. Not on a charter. Not a charter. You can do a voter approval, approval of the like or the debt. Approval of the debt. Oh, if you want to put that in there, that the 15% can only be increased by approval Vote. of that, that would be great. Right. That's, That's what we want. It's not a charter amendment. Right. If, it was, if we could go back up just to the, to the main paragraph, my suggestion would be where it says that the council, in accordance with state statute, may incur debt. Including oh, general okay. obligation bonds, revenue bonds, leases, and all other debt types. Then the next sentence would start without voter approval, the debt service cost shall not exceed 15. Perfect. Yeah. Without yeah. voter approval. Okay. And then yeah. that I, I hate to tie your, your hands without 15. knowing what the future is, Mayor. Well, so I, again, I, I don't want to tie the council's hand. I'm not, the, the concern is the opposite. Right. At some point, the debt service is too high. Without some really good planning being done and understanding what you're doing, and it should go to the voters. Perfect. 
Suzanne? The last one, um, if you'll scroll down, is the city minimum fund balance policy. And I put two options here. The first one, um, Paige drafted, and the second one, I drafted. I'm not. <laughs> So we'll know who's more popular at the end of this. But um, that aside, you can you can read both of them. And the only reason why I added that piece was because um, you can see my second sentence is the policy shall also include a provision to temporarily lower the assigned fund balance should an emergency measure be enacted. One of the things, and I think Will brought it up at one of the meetings, was. We don't want to have our hands tied with this, like, 25% of our operating expenditures tied up. Like, if we have an emergency and we need to use the funds, we need to have access to them. So that, that was me trying to address that point through that sentence there. Otherwise, what's the 25%? What, what, what's that? What, what's the need for that if you're not holding it as a reserve for, right. for an emergency? Yeah. I mean, to ensure, obviously, that you're not – that, that you're not writing, you know, hot checks. Yes, but that's a pretty substantial amount of money. Yeah. To, to not be able to access that under any circumstance, I think, severely ties your council's hands. And so, hopefully, does that sentence kind of address your? Yes, to, on to, to me okay. it does. Yes, I mean it has. It isn't something they should be doing every day. In fact, it right. should be a, a truly extraordinary circumstance where they go below that 25% uh, hard deck. Or semi-hard deck, right? And that's why I specifically reference Article 7, Section 7, because that deals with the emergency measures and when they can be enacted. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It doesn't matter what is classified as emergency. Is, is Not this Section 7, but like Article 7. Section yeah, Article 7. Okay. Does that just, I mean, bad economic conditions, is that an emergency? Right. Um, according to... An emergency measure is one which is necessary for the immediate preservation of the peace, health, or safety of the city. And um, so there's some there's some wiggle room there. What was me. your question on that, Kenny? <laughs> whether whether just a, a fiscal downturn qualifies as an emergency, and it that, says health that? of the city, which would include fiscal health, I think. So I would probably suggest that would include that because we include emergency measure language. On the issuance of bond debt, okay. yeah, good, good, of interest rates adjustments and certain things that can occur. So you're saying we're going with either the one in the red or the one opinion option one or option two? Yeah, those are the two options that you can choose from. Okay. Okay. Before I choose, I want to make sure. I mean, th that makes sense to me in, in in my world in business. I'd never have that kind of reserve unless I was reserving it for a rainy day cookie jar. Is there a reason, Paige, I mean, does, it, does that not make sense that we should be able to access it in an emergency? Is there, reason, is there a reason why we should never be able to access it, and that's the absolute hard deck? Well, I think it's reasonable to put that in there, that it's an emergency measure. Okay. Good. Okay, cool. It's kind of implied in the first where you say targeted, but this is just kind of... So we like both of them. It, it's going to come down to which one fits legally or does it matter on this? I think it comes down to do people prefer it written in there, the emergency measure. That's the only reason that I threw that in there was just because that had come up. It was a point of topic. So I thought we could we could address it through this way. I think it helps clarify it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, it does say that the, the council shall create a fund right. balance policy to target an annual unassigned balance of 25%. Which is great because it's it's a target. It's not the council <coughs> shall maintain a 25%. Right. Good. Right. So. Suzanne, any, anything I else? I just really appreciate Paige uh, yeah. working with me on that. Yeah. Thank you, Paige. Target with her word. <laughs> give, credit, give credit where credit's due, right? So we'll keep going through that. And then anything else? And for the record, this is Article 7 in its entirety. So that's it. That's all there is. That's all she wrote. So are we good with Article 7 then? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
good. Are we moving on to Article 8, Contracts? Suzanne, are we good to move on to Article 8? Yes, uh, yes. Did we, did we have any discrepancies in Article 8? I mean, this, that should be most, that should be cleanup, right? I didn't yeah, we, we didn't, there was no, nothing on Article 8. The product blue. Is there anything that you want to go through? Pardon me? Is there anything in Article 7? On yeah, the that, that wasn't 7. That wasn't so 7. I just have a really simple question. Mm. All right, that was mine. Are ordinances <laughs> governed by statutes? <laughs> Yeah, or, an ordinance is governed so, by and controlled by statute as to, you know, an ordinance has to have a, a minimum of one, one rating, one about, you know, mm -hmm. you can do it in one measure, you can do it in two measures, yeah. and ordinances are subject without, if unless it has an emergency clause, an ordinance is subject to a 30-day referendum period before it becomes effective. So if I pass, if the council passes an ordinance today, that ordinance doesn't go into effect for 30 days unless it has a specific emergency clause addressing why it needs to go into effect immediately and wouldn't be subject to a So you're right, Kenny, we're on set, we are on Article 7 ordinances, it was page 14. Um, the, reason, the reason I asked you that question is from a layman's eye, I don't know that the our residents are going to understand most of the section there in, in the ordinance. Signs, the publications, method of amending, repealing, procedure for adoption. I just wondered if, if that's already in statute if we needed to have it in our charter. Well, there are certain things that you want to clarify, either in the charter or through if you want to leave it up to council through city code with regard to adoption of ordinances and how they are how they're adopted either by one reading or two readings um, we've had discussion at the last meeting that we wanted to make sure that there was sufficient notice as to the second meeting yeah that was kenny's point on that so that there had to be uh, except those that had the emergency clause there had to be the two readings and then the uh, the expected date of the second reading had to be stated at the time of the first reading. Yep. So if, if you're going to want to have those provisions, then I think it's important that you... Yeah, I think we keep those in there. The, the totality of how the, the ordinances are are passed and adopted and the effects of emergency measures and motions for reconsideration. So we did remove section 11 through... 15 yes to pare that down okay can you scroll up to section five again i missed something when you were in the chain thank you thank you but my question was the reason you wanted to admit those is to eliminate drama you thought that they would be incendiary in the I charter i just thought that you know as you know when we send this out to the voters they're reading all these sections, you know, it, you know, they they get clouded. Mm -hmm. Okay. And but then they I, have to be there. But, I mean, I, I understand, but then I think when they get clouded, they zone in on some some of the other topics that maybe okay. are are really well written. I just wanted to understand your thought process. With that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Just looking for ways to shorten to it shorten it and, and, yeah. and cut out <laughs> legalese and. <laughs> I mean, I get I it. I just feel like if it's already out there, if it's, you know, it's Arizona statute. Yeah, the provisions and statutes that govern ordinances are very, they, you know, very limited. It just establishes certain things that have to be done by ordinance and provides for a referendum period. This is intended to prescribe specific direction on how the council will pass and adopt ordinances, what requires an ordinance, 
above and beyond what may be stated in the statute. For example, you has also added zoning amendment um, that wouldn't be subject to uh, the emergency clause and stuff like that. Kenny, any thoughts on that? <coughs> no, no. Mike? No. Good. So they added the part about having the <laughs> second meeting date posted on the first. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's on the lower. That's on the next it's on page. Section six yeah. B. It's lower. Yep. Yeah. We put the the expected date of the second reading shall be shall be stated at the time of the first reading. Anything else on Article 7? Okay, I think we're good on that. We'll move into Article 8, Contracts. Quite a bit in section five. Yeah, go ahead, Suzanne. I really like those changes. And then with the deletions, whoever you mean? made those changes, I really like that. Good. Yeah, I like that they wipe out a lot of stuff. Yeah, that right there. Right. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. It's like keep it simple. Yeah. Thank you. Follow the kids, man. And the notice on the bids, and I think. <laughs> was there any, Andrew, was there something more on that you wanted to add? We talked about that a little bit on the bids. All right, are we good on Section 8? <clears throat> so we'll move into Section Article 9, Ethics. So we have it in an American cannot get a speeding ticket, is that right? <laughs> Unless he's 50 over. <laughs> yeah, if he's on if he's in his golf cart. <laughs> And then we did clean up that whole article the, about the um, based on religion, sex, disability, and all that, right, Kenny? Is that that yeah. good to you We're now? by state or federal law. Yeah, perfect. I'm curious, good. personal trait. Is that your is that your language? That was on basis of any personal trait. In any other fashion, on the basis of any personal trait, characteristic, or class membership against which discrimination is prohibited by state or federal law. Perfect. Yeah. Good. And we deleted a lot more here too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And then on this section on the ethics, and Suzanne had uh, put together a, a, a little section, and that looks like they, they did add that, your proposal that we talked about last meeting. They did. I had envisioned paragraph A kind of being at right underneath Article 9 ethics, but I'm, I'm fine with it there as well. Yeah. 
just to, from a like the timeline of it, my well, I is there a reason why is that is that okay? Do you have any issues with that? What was the so I'd like to take paragraph A and move it right underneath ethics. Like up to the article nine ethics to like kind of frame our ethics section. Section five We're starting article nine, she's in section five. Oh, and just leave B here under section five? Yes. So you can move paragraph A to under ethics you're saying? Right as the as the top in the beginning. It's like a section one person. Or there's just a header and then below that you want. That's yeah. what I had envisioned when I made that okay. suggestion. Is that is that is that a problem? No, that's fine. Okay, okay. good. Could section five just be titled gifts then? Yeah, Personal I think so. Gifts. Yeah, then just gifts. That's fine. Good. Are we good on that? Mm-hmm. Right, we'll move into Article 10, Elections. We need more deletion. <laughs> and then we did put in there a flip of the coin. Uh-huh. <laughs> For a tie. I like the way this was condensed. Good. Anybody and have any other issues on the election section? <laughs> Andrew, anything on elections? Anything? Yes, sir. Good. Suzanne? All right, so we can move that. We'll just go right on into Article 9. I don't think we had a whole lot on that. And then we did put the language in, Mike, that you wanted on the, they have to be an attorney, right, for the magistrate. Magistrate. Yeah. Yep. Just moving through that. Anything else on that, that article? Otherwise, we'll go into Article 13, Franchise and Public Utilities. I don't think we had any amendment or changes in that, Article 13. Anybody have any other, anything else? So I, we were going to add, if we're good with that, we have a couple more things I wanted to talk about. Um, we had add, we had talked, discussed about adding two other articles. One had to do with uh, the La Loma um, heritage, and then the second one had to do with the water. Um, and think, discussions about the water one. The water, water one. Me? The water one. I thought. I think we caught on the yeah. duties of the mayor. So that yeah. No, I, I was going to get to that. Okay. So I guess we can stay with that water. So and. We did get some feedback from the legal in terms of what we can do or what we can add. They put together some language here yeah. that went under uh, the, what the council, the requirements that we would have for the council and also as far as the city manager. And then that will get put in to those sections. Is that right? Uh, yeah, just if, if there was a desire to want to expand that and have specific direction with regard to water as opposed to just the annual report. There's, I think, uh, often I put together mm-hmm. some potential language such as the council shall by ordinance require proof of adequate water supply for all the development, 
or the council shall by ordinance require proof of adequate water supply for all development, which may take the form of compliance with existing state programs. Or yeah, I think we got past all that. So I think we're just, just looking for the city manager to give the good. annual report okay. on status. Is that is that the case? Are we good with that, mm -hmm. Suzanne? Good. By yeah. the way, did you see what Buckeye did? 100 acres of land, they couldn't get the certificate for water, so they're turning it all into rental property. So the same number of residents, same amount of land, same amount of water, but they don't need a certificate. Wow. Just, just saying. Gosh. All right. Um, and then the other one was the La Loma project. That would be our the next article. And um, yeah. when they talked about the language in that in terms of um, – no selling, no rezoning, abide by intent of gifting documents. And then there was some verbiage that they were going to put together on that, and it looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. Are we all good with that one? Yes. Do you, do you guys have this? I didn't print it out. So the, the language that we provided was to option one was, the city shall maintain city ownership of the La Loma homestead property and preserve it as a social, cultural, or historical amenity benefiting the city and community of Litchfield Park. And number two was the city shall never sell the La Loma homestead property and shall preserve it as a social, cultural, or historical amenity benefiting the city and community of Litchfield Park. And then the third one was the La Loma homestead shall remain city property and shall be preserved as a social, cultural, historical amenity benefiting the city and community of Litchfield Park. Number, number one, where it says the city shall maintain ownership of, yes. as opposed to the city shall never sell. Because there's other things you can do as opposed to sell uh, the property. Kenny, this was one of your things. Yeah, I, you I want to hear the three things shall maintain as a social so and a social cultural so or historical amenity benefiting the yeah, city and community of Litchfield Park which, and that is the restrictive language that is in the, the recorded CCMRs that run with the property. Okay, so you have to apply to amend the CCMRs, don't you? Well, that's the thing. If you want to not have anything in the charter with regard to the hilltop, you don't have to. It's already it has restrictive provisions in it. So we would like to. If we you want to want address it, there. you can. If you don't, we can completely just make more. I think we should put it in there just as an enforcement. Yeah. So from a legal, Michael, from a legal standpoint, somebody comes before you and says, "Hey, I want to." I want to change these CCNRs because I want to develop something else, but our charter says they can't. Where, who's higher in? Yeah, and the CCNRs are private. Those are between just individuals, so I don't think the charter would have any any bearing on it. <coughs> the the charter can't affect the, the CCNRs. If there's CCNRs in it. No, but it, it can mirror what what's in the restrictive covenant. And the, the other thing is, is this. This puts a restriction on on the the city, right. whereas the restrictive covenant those can only be enforced by uh, the prior owners. If the prior owners don't want to enforce those restrictive covenants, then they don't have to. What this would do is this would say, okay, this puts those restrictive covenant obligations on the city to maintain it. So right now, for example, if the city were to sell the hilltop property and the prior owners who are the beneficiaries of that restrictive covenant don't object to that, they don't pursue it, the property can be sold. Kenny, which one do you like? One, two, or three? I, I, it's up to, as long as everybody's comfortable that social, cultural, and historically historical amenity, if, if I think that's pretty restrictive. I don't think that a lot, but, but Mayor, you had mentioned, and, and it made me nervous to be honest with you, that you know it's hard to maintain that property and keep it as an open use for the public without generating some revenue up there, is, as I think what you said. And that, and that's absolutely correct. Okay, so, so my question is, can that be done in the context of a social, cultural, and historic amenity? You know, the, the problem is that 
the way that the family has agreed that those words are going to be interpreted along with the city, the city and the family have talked about it, is that we can do economic we can do economic activity on the hilltop, so long as the proceeds of that economic activity, at least to some extent, benefits the hilltop itself. So what we have been talking with talking with different groups on it. Uh, one is Sun Health, the other is a, is another local group. Is to use the property as an event center, and part of the proceeds of using it as an event center will be to pay for the capital improvements that are needed, and to pay for upkeep. And so the family has been okay with that because it, at the end of the day, we'll end up with a hilltop that is well maintained and it, and it has the capital improvements. That are necessary to bring it up to something that was like what it was, so it'd be similar to what it used to be like when the Litchfield family had it. So I'm not sure how you're going to work that into this charter, but that concept needs to be available to the city. Wouldn't that fall under social? I mean, an event. Social, I mean, yeah, well, I, that, I mean, I, I think the, 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 please go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. The very first number one talks about the zoning. Um, agritourism. Can you do events under that zoning? Yes. I would say yes. Okay. So then, if we have that, that's built sure. in. Then again, I haven't looked at the all of the different language you have in this section, so I, I don't know how it all relates to one another. So, Paul, you, if you, I could, your, go ahead. Your, your question uh, was, you know, what, which one of these three? I like number one. I I think social covers that. I co social, culture, and historic works for me. I. I I, I think it's restrictive enough that you don't have commercial, you don't have a store, you don't have, uh, you know, something up there that doesn't benefit the city in these ways. Go ahead. Yeah, the problem, the problem is you have to understand commercial, you know, you think about commercial as like a 7-Eleven, but that's not really commercial. <coughs> commercial is part of what will be happening up there. The event center is not going to be free. You can't go up and use, have the wedding for free. <coughs> so, I mean, there's a commercial activity going on that's going to generate it's going to generate income. Some of the income is going to go to whoever's investing the capital to put it in, and some of the income is going to go to maintaining the health fund. Go ahead. I, could, I just want to read the language of specific from the recorded document that establishes the restriction, and it says, if the city shall acquire fee title to the homestead upon exercise of the option, which it has, and the homestead shall thereafter be withdrawn from the declaration, uh, which it has, then in such event, the use of homestead shall nevertheless continue to be restricted to a social, cultural, or historical amenity benefiting the city and community of Lichfield Park, Park, which is why we... So you're just repeating it in the chart. Yes. Yeah. So and the family's the, okay with it. In, in, could, please, go ahead. Then it says, which restriction is expressly for the benefit of and may be enforced by the declarant and Sun Health and their respective successors in the signs? So this restriction only applies to the uh, the Denny and Sun Health. So if you if you want to ensure that the city has a fish, has additional council restrictions, if you will, then the language that we proposed mirrors this. It just says that the city <coughs> shall maintain, as opposed to this is expressly for the benefit of the declarant, which is the Denny's entity, and Sun Health. So we're just placing the same restrictions that we get to enforce. Right. I, yeah, I'm fine with that. Do we yeah. need to say, speak to the zoning? No. Okay. No. That it can't be rezoned. Yeah, I, I, I like that. The, so we'll go with number one, if the city's good with that. And I'd like the mayor to, again, actually have the opportunity to make sure that we have the language set up so that the city I'll, can... I'll look at the whole paragraph, but as long yeah. as it mirrors what yeah. we have yeah. we have now in the deed, the deed restrictions, mm -hmm. then it, it's fine. But we don't want to end up... I mean, there could be a bad situation where the only one to enforce the CCRs is Sun Health, and I don't know that you want to rely on Sun Health to do that, necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the work on this. Yeah. I appreciate it. I, I'm glad you Does anybody want to make a motion to submit 
the current document to the legal team for review. And to produce a draft. And to produce a draft back for us then to um, make a final vote on at the next meeting, which will be after, will be next year. A final vote on sending the document to the voters? You mean our yes. Yeah, yes, I'm at gonna, that time. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Well, I'm going to urge you that before you take a final vote to send the document to the voters, that you hold at least one public meeting. Yes, we are yeah, going to do that, that, and that's on that. We are definitely going to do that. In fact, on that note, you were going to come back with us some with some days. <coughs> but well, do you want to continue? Yeah, let me let me finish. Yeah. Is there anybody that wants to make a motion to submit this document to the legal for review? and then to come back to us for a final vote. So more goes to that. Kenny Jones made a motion. Second. Marty Etchart made the second. Mm -hmm. Is there any other discussion about this? Can we do a roll call vote? Yeah, we'll, we can do a roll call vote. Okay. Do, do we need a roll call vote? No. If there's an objection, if, if there's a verbal objection, then we'll call for a roll call vote. Okay. Sonny, are you still with us? I am. Okay. <laughs> so. Did you hear the motion that's on the floor? Yes, I did. Okay. Is there any other discussion? No. Okay. So all those in favor of submitting the draft to back to legal now for review with the additions that we've made, um, then to come back to us for, for an additional vote, all those in favor of that, say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Is there any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Great. So, um, is, is your legal review include a, a linguistic review by our yeah, what, uh, yeah. doctorate uh, English professor? Well, when we get it back from legal, yeah, we're we'll gonna look at it. I have more comments than answers. I've understood from from just rumors that I've heard is that he's been very quiet in this process because he wanted to wait. Julian, a final document that he could help <laughs> 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 it's, like it's a good thing he's volunteer because his fees are way more than the legal fees. <laughs> <laughs> I um, not mind <laughs> Okay. Can I, oh, it's on the um, agenda here. So we had discussed about after, before we do our final signing, that we might have a uh, open public meeting. And the city was going to help us with that, and you had some dates. Yes, I did, Mr. Chairman. We reached that several facility moments. So Sowers Hall was only available on January 3rd. I would say that's too close to the holiday. Yeah. Uh -huh. St. Peter's is only available on the 13th. Just as a reminder, this has to be done before January 16th is your absolute deadline, and you want to give yourself time to make changes after your public input meeting. What day is the 13th? What day of the week is that? It's a Saturday. It's too close. Too close. Yeah. Yeah. St. Peter's yeah. was available on the 11th. Okay, the 11th. Um, some good news for the wigwam. We did reach out to the wigwam as well about a ballroom, and the wigwam was available on the 8th, 9th, and the 10th. So that would be what I would recommend. Is that we yeah. the uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That gives you enough time to turn around and change it. So. Uh -huh. And just so everybody knows, wigwam agreed not to volunteer not to charge us for this meeting. That's very nice of you to do that. Eighth and ninth are better for me. Anybody? Yeah, I think the, the, better. the ninth Tenth would be. Uh, I would, yeah, was the ninth because it's not a Monday. The yeah. ninth because Wait. people might be still yeah, gone, gone for, for the me. weekend. Yeah, I'd say the ninth. Ninth. Ninth or tenth. What time will we be talking? Evening. Yes. Yeah. Evening. Or like a five o'clock, probably. Uh, I was, maybe I was, six. I was six o'clock. Six o'clock. Oh, okay. They all work for me. Then. People get yeah, party. Nine o'clock. Good morning. Five. Uh, Andrew, do you have a choice between the Tuesday or Wednesday, 9th uh, or 10th? Either works for me. The Tuesday is traditionally the planning and zoning meeting. So I, I, the 10th works better for me on the Wednesday, the 10th. Okay. I'll do it the You're the guy. You're in charge. Yep. <laughs> Can we show the Wednesday, the 10th, yeah. on the Wednesday? <laughs> yeah, at 6 o'clock at the wigwam. Can I get a motion in a second, please? Oh, yeah, I need a motion on that. I motion that we have a public meeting. Ann um, Claire made the motion. Is there a second? For the tenth, I'll second. Suzanne, any further discussion? All those in favor of having the open meeting on the tenth? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? 
Chair, what time? Six. Six. Six o'clock. On the 13th. Tenth. No, Tenth. Tenth. January 10th Tenth. Tenth at the Wigwam. Thank you. Um, Would that be like in Towers Hall or something? I mean, so uh, then that, that will be our next meeting then, is that right? We, then we, will, then our, we won't need to have a meeting before then? Oh, no. Oh, no, no we, we need to. to. review the draft. Probably got to look at it. Okay. got to review the draft. All right. So when do you guys want to, does anybody want to make a motion to have a meeting to review the draft? When can they? Legal, when can you turn it back to us? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Any day, anytime after Christmas. Can we do the meeting on the 9th? Or no, that's what you said, you're, you can't do that. No, oh. I think we, we meet next, uh, what is next week? Almost Christmas. Yeah, we're running into the holidays yeah, here. Christmas. Maybe one so so we're going to we're gonna get a draft. Thursday the 4th? And then, and then it's going to be further edited by somebody for grammar and punctuation and all that, or not? No, that's going to get done. We're going to go through and we're going to combine all of these changes. We're going to do a full-on review and bring back a clean draft. And then we want you to want you to go through that and have time to go through that before the public meeting. So, do you guys want to either meet like on December 27th in between Christmas and New Year? Yes. Yes, that would be better. I will be gone that first week of January. That's a Wednesday. That's right. Wednesday the 27th. Mm -hmm. Is well, there a motion? Anybody want to make a motion? Is the is there is the room available then, Terry? That would just be a regular. Let me look real quick. Do it here or see if the library is available. Ooh, library. <laughs> <laughs> the conference room is open. We'll have to check the calendar for the library. All right. If we can get the library, we'll take it. But we'll uh, go with the conference room. <laughs> <laughs> I need my gavel. Is there a motion? Yes, sir, Mr. Just, just a question. I'll just speak for me. On the, I'm going that week between Christmas and New Year's. I just wonder if other people are available that week. I'm gone. So I'm everybody will get a copy. And, and, if, and if anybody has any changes, maybe they could just submit them to write in writing, and we could consider them during that meeting. If you can't phone in or be here, you could just say, you know, I had I had an issue with this section. Here's my comment. Could they call? Can they do that? They can call us with their concerns. They can call you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then, you, know, you could call in. So, does anybody want to make a motion to have it on Wednesday, the twenty seventh? What time? Do we have enough people here. What time are we motioning? Five o'clock. Mm. So moved. I have some. Who made the motion? Nope. We have oh. Kenny's made a motion, but it's not been seconded. Okay. Okay, Chuck seconded. Any discussion, Suzanne? So I'm trying to think of how this is going to flow then. So the legal gives us the draft. We meet on December 27th to discuss the draft and any right, right potential again. changes. And then and then what happens between that and then our meeting with the public on January 10th? I, I think they need to say what we're doing. I think they need to publish it online as soon as possible okay. after that, yeah. so that people get a chance to look at it and decide whether they want to come down and comment. Okay. So at the December 27th meeting, we are essentially approving our draft. Then we're taking comments from the public. Then we're going to have another meeting to finalize it and then that's when, okay yeah. i just wanted to make sure i understood the 27th yep. you would essentially be approving it for an initial publication to the to the public, public. Yeah. prior to the public meeting mm -hmm. and if there are any changes or anything you want done prior to that public meeting we're doing at the 27th i wouldn't anticipate there would be substantial <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to vote. All right. Is there is there any other discussion? All those um, in favor? Yes, uh, Sonny. Uh, I don't know if it's this is the time to bring it up, but one, once we have decided this, could we have a brief discussion of maybe a certain group of people in this group discussing how that that public meeting is going to be handled and how it's going to function? Yeah. Yes. 
We have to create a presentation. You can't, can't just go in there and say, I yeah, hope no, you all read it. Do you have any we questions? We can do that, and that will still be on. <laughs> we can do that on the 27th. Yeah. Also, maybe um, at this meeting on the 27th, we have to have a, maybe a social media game. Okay. So is it, we have a motion on you know. the floor to pass. Does uh, uh, all those in favor of having that meeting on the 27th? At 5 o'clock. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, that, that's good on that. So do we need to, do we need to, as far as the discussion of appropriate campaign efforts for the proposal of charter, is that, we, we've been discussing that now. Do we, did you want, do we need to keep that up? advice with regard to, I think there was questions as to what, what the board could or couldn't do with regard to, uh, yeah. to campaigning. And so essentially, the board is essentially disbanded as soon as you vote and approve the charter to go to the electors. So as soon as you have that vote sometime after the, the, the January 10th meeting, uh, where you your, your public input, I would assume there may be one additional meeting that gets scheduled between the 10th and the 16th or the 20th when it has to go to, uh, to publication, that once you have that final vote that you approve the final draft to go to the voters, you are then essentially no longer Board of Freeholders. You are done with your elected calling. And you can proceed to engage in campaigning as any other mm -hmm. individual in the city. Um, the only restriction with regard to campaigning is on the city, not being able to expend city funds uh, with regard to an election item. With the city is restricted. The city can put out the the information pamphlet with the the mailer and stuff like that. Um, and the city can hold uh, it can hold the uh, you know an, an initial discussion group. You know, and they're gonna they're they're able to assist us with this open can, meeting yeah, form that, with the public can assist with doing an open meeting for discussion pro or con. It just has to be, it, it can't be blatantly a, a, this is a meeting to support the passage of this charter. It would be essentially kind of like a, uh, a, public, a, a, a public hearing or, yeah. or when you have candidates come for a, a Q and A okay. between all the candidates, it would be a pro and con discussion with regard to the passage of the charter or something like that. So after after you approve that, you're the essentially no longer elected officials. You are back to being able to do whatever you want to do when it comes to moving forward with advocating for the passage of the charter. The, the main restriction is just on the city itself with regard to what it can and can't expend taxpayer funds with regard to Pushing in the right. of the chart. Matt, do you have a question? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I apologize if I missed this, but I know we're having a public input meeting on the 10th. Did we schedule a final meeting date for you guys to do the final vote? Carrie, the 16th is absolute hard deadline, correct? That is correct. I have to have it to the so newspaper on the 22nd. Thank you, Carrie. So if you're going to, so you'd have to meet for a final vote sometime between the 11th and the 15th. And the 15th is a legal holiday. So we'd have to do it on the 14th, the Thursday. Okay. So all we need to do at that point is incorporate the comments we got from people, see if there's any changes we want to make. Should be a quick meeting. Anytime after the 10th is fine. That's correct. So we could do the 11th? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right after the 11th. Your only risk there is for the public to make a lot of changes. I'm fine with the 11th. I'm just talking. Well, let's get that library on the 11th. <laughs> um, does anybody want to make a motion to have that final meeting on the 11th? So moved. Five o'clock at the library. Okay. okay. Second. Kenny made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Ann made the second. Uh -huh. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Andrew, did you have a, a question as well? Yes. Uh, in terms of timing for the election, when do it's at the library the mail in ballot election again? When do those go formally out to the voters? Just in terms of campaigning 
Terry, did you hear that question that Andrew asked? I did not. When will voters receive their ballots in the mail? I'd have to look at this. Give me just a second. I have the schedule here. Thank you. I can tell you that the city will be before that. So that they won't, the ballots won't come out before. Well, they won't come out until after the 26, right? So it gets submitted to the. Right. Oh, the state of the city. Yeah. Because we wanted to make sure that city was before. Just about when the ballots. Is that going to come up? Will that be discussed in the state of the city? Yes, sir. You can, you can acknowledge <laughs> that, no, sir. You can, you can acknowledge be. that there's an election coming up, but you, the state of the city wouldn't be able to so encourage. Right. Citizens won't be able to ask questions to you at that meeting. Well, they, they, can. They, they, they can ask questions. It can be an informational, but it just it can't yeah, be. Well, they can't have the yeah. right. Terry, did you get any info on that? <clears throat> Here, I'm still looking. That's okay. Any other discussion? Should, so should we, uh, uh, forgive me if this is a ridiculous question, should we contact the media for this meeting at the Wigwam? So I would, I that staff will do that. Yeah. Well, a day out of this. Right. And we're going to talk on the 27th in more detail as yeah. to the plan for that public <coughs> meeting and how it can be handled and how we can publicize it, different things like that. And staff will draft the press release for your review on the 27th. Okay. We'll have staff prepare a PowerPoint presentation so that you know, it can be given to the public. And it'll, it'll be a pretty straightforward public hearing. And but just will you be running that meeting or no? Uh, you will probably. Well, I'm fine with that. I just want to know. <laughs> you don't need the gavel. I don't. Terry, do you have any information for us? You can get more like If not, we can get it, get it later. Yeah, we still need to approve that. I can give it to you. I just like this print is so See. small. Okay. Um, since I am the chairperson, I can bounce around on the agenda. And um, <laughs> we approved the minutes from last meeting. Do we? Did any? Does anyone want to make it? We already got a motion. A second. All right. I don't know Kenny made the motion. Oh, oh, second. Seconded. Here is all those. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to adjourn. Good. All right. I need a, <laughs> a motion. Excuse me. Okay. Go ahead, Terry. Terry. Are we approving the minutes? We did. Yes. Yes. We did. Oh, I apologize. I Who moved yeah, I messed up. Kenny, Kenny. Kenny moved. Susan Six seconded. We all, and the motion passed. Thank you. Unanimously. <laughs> Any further discussion? City? Anybody? Mayor? I just want to say congratulations for me getting through this first step. Very, very effectively, efficiently. You guys did a great job. Okay. Thank you. Is there any motion out there for adjournment? So moved. Kenny makes a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Marty makes a discussion. <laughs> All those. Uh, Hi. 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 The meeting is over. <laughs> Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel fine. I just don't.